Nothing personal, kid. So I'm going to give you some tips on what to do if you're a high schooler and you want to become a software engineer. So my, you might be asking yourself, what does this guy know about software engineering in high school? Well, I've actually, I'm actually a software engineer right now, and I was a, I went to high school. <laughs> I mean, I guess most people, most software engineers went to high school at one point. I mean, most. And then I was also a high school teacher like two years ago. So I know a little bit about high schoolers and what mistakes they make because they make a lot of mistakes, I know. So one of the biggest mistakes I've seen high schoolers make, I've, I've only taught high school for a year, but the biggest mistake I've seen in that year was that they care most about, I guess, social circles and f making friends and what friends think of them, which takes a lot of time off of them and they could be doing other things with their time. So friendships are nice, but oftentimes friends don't make jobs. They, they could provide references, but at least this early, friends do not give you jobs when you're in high school. Uh, later on, they'll play a bigger role in making networking and helping you find jobs. But right now, it's, in high school, it's not that important. So one of the things I would focus on learning in high school is focus on being really, really good at math and science. So being really, really good at solving these math and science problems helps train the, the, the big brain of yours, your high school big brain, how to solve algorithmic problems that are going to come into play later on if you want to become a, a software engineer. So sometimes, even later on, when you're studying software engineering, like maybe in college, you'll need to learn complex math like linear algebra to solve some, I guess, algorithm problems as well. So math does play a big role. So this might sound like an obvious tip, but if your school has computer science or programming classes, take them. So even better, if your school has AP Computer Science Principles or AP Computer Science, just 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 take them. It'll solve or it'll save a lot of time for you in the long run, so you don't have to take those classes in college. So my school did not have offer AP Computer Science in the school, so I had to take it online. So if your school offers it, that's like a blessing. So I was not, I guess, motivated enough to take the online class fully through. I only finished the first semester of AP Computer Science, but that did lead to the decision of me wanting to become a software engineer eventually, even though I did major in physics. Um, since I, I took like eight, six AP classes in school, I probably should have took like five in school and then maybe like a computer class or something, or like go to a computer lab just to take that computer science class. That's what I would do if I would change. Um, instead of taking maybe like a useless class like economics, macroeconomics, or world government, or there was Comparative government, that was I, that was a useless class for me. I mean, I learned a lot about Nigeria, but I'd rather learn about how to solve <laughs> algorithm problems or how to code more at that time. So yeah, if you pass those AP computer science classes, you'll be on a fast track to becoming a software engineer. And or you can even do um, maybe dual enrollment at like a local community college. They, they might have some computer science classes there as well that you can learn, or programming classes. Either will help. So high school might be free for you, or, or it might not be. You could have to go to a, a paid high school, but college most of the time is an investment. And what I mean by that is it could make you money in the long term of things, but you are you are going to pay for it usually. Almost like you have like get a scholarship or your parents pay for it or something like that. But... It's an investment, so you want to think about how you can pay the least amount of money for that investment. So to pay the least, least amount of money for uh, to, for college, you want to spend the go to college for the least amount of time. Seems kind of obvious, but I guess a lot of people don't think so because people have like average of hundreds of thousands of student loans. Maybe not an average, but it's probably like thirty thousand dollars in student loans. I, I finished college with like 10k student loans because I was working through college, like doing, being a resident assistant and whatnot. Also, the more time you spend in college, the less time you spend at a real job. So this is kind of important as well because it's kind of like the opportunity cost of you spend more time at college, so you spend less time making more money. So it's kind of like an exponential kind of, maybe not exponential, but it's just 
you get lose a little lose a little bit if you spend more time in college for the long term. So consequently, consequently, try to take as many like AP classes and or dual enrollment classes to spend less time in college as well. Um, I remember when I went to college, they I, they were limited me on forty five credits is the number of credits I could bring into college, which was kind of annoying. Otherwise, I would probably have more. Although you should try to take as many like college classes while you're in high school. I kind of if there is like a limit on number of credits you want to go to you want to you can take in like for your ideal uh, university then I would kind of stay away from kind of useless classes um, I mean of course you're required most of the time to take English so I mean even though it seems useless it, it probably is but um, more useless would be like electives that don't really help you in the long term so what I mean by that would be like I took AP European history in high school and it, it was a fun class like I learned all about European history and it was great my um, high school teacher was it was a great teacher and he tell, told us like all the cool stories during like European history I mean he's, he's dead now unfortunately but um, it, it was not very helpful for college I don't even think that credit was used since some of my credits had to be taken away because I reached the credit max but whatever all right another good tip for high schoolers wanting to become software engineers is try to get really good grades get really good test scores like SAT ACT and try to be really involved in clubs and sports and whatnot I mean this might seem kind of obvious as well but you want to do all these things and maybe some more as well to get into a good university because a good university is somewhat biased for getting good jobs like they'll have better career fairs because like big companies will be care more about them as well I mean the ideal world is you want to get into like an Ivy League school like MIT or something like that Caltech um, and some some big name schools so that you can get a big name job right I mean this won't happen 100% of the time though so if you cannot get into an Ivy League school I wouldn't stress about it it's most places don't even care I mean that you have a college degree I mean the big some big places don't care that you have a college degree I wouldn't say most places I think a lot most places do care right now anyways in 2020 um, but maybe in the future they won't care as much but if you cannot get into an Ivy League college it's probably fine I mean it, it is fine but I would probably focus on getting into like a top 10 public university I went to a top 10 public university. <laughs> um, so yeah, maybe focus on to a public school because those are cheaper. They are, I guess, there's a lot more people usually at them as well because they're cheaper. <laughs> so you get to network more with more people. So another thing about which college to get into is that if, depending on what state you're currently in, it'll usually be cheaper to get into a college in the current state you're that you're in like if you're in uh, California then it'll be cheaper to get into a California state school rather than like a school in New York that would probably be more expensive to get into like a New York school schools I don't know if this is for sure or not but that's how it was for Florida schools because Florida schools if you came from out of state it would be like a oh, little three times more expensive or something crazy crazily expensive all right, another thing about involvement, uh, try to become president of all the clubs, <laughs> as many as you can, because more clubs you're involved in, more like colleges and universities will think, ooh, this guy is this person, not necessarily a guy, this guy slash gal knows a lot about involvement, is very social, they can be a leader, colleges care about leaders for some reason, um, so yeah, they'll want to get you into the, their university or school. Another thing for high schoolers is you want to start working on coding, learning how to code, and learning side projects as early as possible because it will get you a head start on the people that may not know how to do those things when they're going into college. And a head start is really important in this kind of highly competitive field where there's a lot of people flocking to computer science because it gives you a lot of money, but you have to know what you're doing. So I, I had a friend in high school who learned Python pretty early on. So this was like eight years ago or something like that. 
2012 or so. Uh, he, he learned Python pretty well, and at this time I was learning Java because uh, AP Computer Science was teaching Java at the time. So he was learning Python. He didn't, he didn't care about Java um, at the time. So the, if you do something like that, you learn technologies before you even get a chance for like everyone to know them, then you can catapult you ahead into the workforce. So you can potentially try to get an internship early on in college. Like you maybe even could get an internship like your freshman year of college. A lot of people, a lot of companies will intern freshmen. So like as long as you say you're not a freshman like early on, I don't, I don't think they'll care that much. Because yeah, just say you're not a freshman like early on in college and you should be able to get an internship. So you might even want to try to compete in like competitive programming, like as kind of like a hobby uh, early on and maybe start, you can start in high school, start practicing in high school and that could push you ahead so that once you get to college, you will be a great competitive programmer and you'll be great at solving those kind of problems as well, which usually are kind of harder than um, interview questions. May, I don't, I'm not really sure, but they might be harder sometimes. And but it's practice and practice makes perfect. And if no one's perfect, why practice, right? So I guess another obvious thing, if your school has a programming club, join it. Or if it doesn't, make a programming club for um, your high school. There's probably a bunch of national programming club societies for high school. So you can probably go to their website and ask how you can make a club at your high school and then if you get a teacher on board of the plan then it'll probably be pretty easy for you to make a club and then what if you started the club that's it's a huge thing to put on the resume for colleges as well so start a club a programming club and then I think maybe math teachers or science teachers would probably be the best to ask to like sponsor it so that they can help the club grow as well all right, most of all, I would say to enjoy your high school years. <laughs> my high school years were some of the best of my life. Um, I really liked high school because I felt like it gave a lot of, like, that's where I grew a lot like, in high school. I mean, not just height, but um, uh, you, you already have, like, a great mindset right now if you're looking to become a software engineer this early on in high school because a lot of people don't even have college degrees, and... They've already, they gra or they graduated with like a silly degree. Um, I won't say silly degrees, but there are some people that graduated with silly degrees and they wish they went into computer science or software engineering earlier on. So you already have like a good start on the rest of the workforce and coding jobs are gonna increase higher and higher as the years go on because uh, automation is growing, AI, robotics, all those kind of things are becoming more and more popular and used. So it'll be keep on growing. It'll be easier to find jobs for computer science as opposed to something like uh, maybe not ditch digging. Uh, I don't think our robots are there yet, but <laughs> maybe something like McDonald's workers because we already have like you can order the, um, at the McDonald's like you like touch the screen and you order what you want so that already takes some jobs away so you've you already got a good start so uh thank you for watching if you like the video subscribe and like the video or whatnot see ya